الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأو إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة من ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا صدق الله العظيم These are few ayahs from a long story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have narrated in Surah Al-Kahf that talk about some days of fitna in the past ummas when everyone would only talk about kufr and shirk. When every conversation that would take place in that community would be against the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In their gatherings, they would encourage each other to worship idols and to do kufr. There were some young people as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُمْ فِتِيَةٌ They were young people. آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ They believed in the Lord. They believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because in those days of fitna, these are some young people that are trying to hold to their deen and iman. It's not easy to confront all of those people in their community and especially when it comes to their own relatives, their own elders, their own parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَزِدْنَاهُمْ huda." We increase their hidayah so that, so that they will be strong in their iman and their faith. And finally, as, as a result of this hidayah, these people confronted their own people. And at the end they realized there is no reason to talk to these, these people anymore. They don't want to hear anything about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they love them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says once, and he's talking to them now, that once you decided that you're leaving them, وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ and you are going to leave everything that these people worship beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he told these people, which means it's not a wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in their heart, in their mind to understand. Let's go to one of the caves in the mountains. Allah will open his rahmah for you. And he will, meet, he will make all of your situations easy for you. And accordingly, these young people went and stayed in the cave. Looking at that situation, when everyone around them is against them, their own relatives are against them, and people are trying to force them to get into the kufr and shirk. These people to save their iman decided that they want to stay away from all of this. They go into the cave. What do we think? How much, how, for how long a person can live in that cave? 
According to the Quran, we know that they had approximately 309 years left out of their lives. They had to live for at least 309 more years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِ We strengthened their hearts. They still went. They decided, let's take this step. And then we will put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see what happens next. At least we should take this step to protect our deen and iman. By being around this, these people that, were, that we are normally with, we will not be able to protect our deen and iman. This is called hijrah in sharia. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, Hijrah will not end. Hijrah will continue in this ummah till the day of judgment. Yes, there is a hadith that says, La hijrah ba'd al-fatih. There is no hijrah after Makkah Mukarramah was conquered. That is talking about the hijrah from Makkah to Medina of those days. Because it was fart in those days to do hijrah from Makkah to Medina. After Makkah Mukarramah was conquered, now there is no reason to leave Makkah Mukarramah because their iman was safe over there in Makkah. But as far as general hijrah in the world, that will continue till the day of judgment. What does hijrah mean? To leave the place, leave the situation that is harmful to our iman, and for the sake of protecting our iman, the person goes to somewhere else where he can save his iman and he can practice his deen. This is hijrah. This is what those young people did. With all the difficulties they were going to face, they took the steps, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in these ayahs of the Qur'an al-Kareem, how He helped them when they took those, those steps. Same thing, we see the situation of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in. In Makkah Mukarramah, they were very well settled. They were in their homes, and in those days, it wasn't like we have the situation in our days. Most of us, we change the place of our residence every some year. In those days, we look at the history, this wasn't the situation at all. <clears throat> the people that are considered the people of Quraysh, they never lived anywhere else for years and years. For hundreds of years, the route, you keep on tracing the roots, they all were here in the very same land. Some of them from the time that this place was established. The roots are going to Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. Imagine how far back the route, that route is going to. And Ismail alayhi salatu was salam was in Makkah Mukarramah. So they are always from the time up to this day they are there. Thousands of years. In that, in that situation... Where a person has his own family established over there, his business is there, everything is there. And he doesn't even know too much about other parts of the world. All of a sudden, to take the steps, leaving this place, leaving your hometown, and immigrating to some other part of the world. Where you know for sure you won't be able to take nothing with you from here. The situation of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi mishma'in, when they left Makkah Mukarramah. They left their businesses, their homes, family members, everything that they had. And many of them, they went to Medina Munawwara, totally empty-handed, nothing with them except the clothing that they had on their bodies. That's it. Two sheaths that would cover their body. That's all they're taking with them. And some of them were very successful businessmen, very wealthy people in Makkah Mukarramah. They leave everything behind and go to Medina Munawwara. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after some test, He started opening the doors of His risk for them. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of in Surah Al-Kahf. 
that the most important thing we have is our Iman. If Iman is not safe, then what else a person is going to earn? What is it that we are getting better than our Iman? Is there anyone giving us anything better than Iman for which we are selling our Iman and taking something else from the people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a word in Quran that we really have to pay very close attention to it. Look at the word ishtara. There are people who buy dalala, who buy the falsehood by paying the price of the hidayah. Allah has given them the hidayah. They pay that price. They pay the hidayah as a price to buy the dalala, to buy the falsehood. Allah has given them iman. They sell their iman in order to buy the other things. And in reality, when we look around, we will see that this is happening a lot these days. When people are paying the iman as a price, they are paying their Iman as a price to get some other things. Get a better position. People are selling their Iman. Make more of worldly gain. They are selling their Iman to make something out of it. Have a better standard of the life. People will sell their Iman. Ishtarawud dalalata bil huda. They're selling, they're, they're buying the dalala, they're buying all of those wrongdoings for the price of hidayah, and this is the price that they're paying, their hidayah, their iman. Allah has blessed them with iman. Allah has blessed them with the understanding of the deen. But they want to change the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just because they see some other items over there that they would like to buy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have informed us in the hadith that a time will come before the day of Qiyamah when a person will not be able to protect his Iman except to stay away from everyone else. As soon as you start associating with people, you see that they want to take their Iman away from you. Sell your Iman and you can join us. We'll offer you a lot of things. But you have to pay the price of your Iman. This is all what they want. <coughs> to be in our gatherings, you have to commit these sins. And unfortunately, this is now going beyond having people who have no Iman to do these type of things. Now we are in fact getting people who may think that they are people of Iman. And that would require us, you have to sell your Iman to be with us. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, we know that their level of Iman was so high that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if any of them would give a handful of wheat as a sadaqah, the reward that he would get by giving the handful of weed as sadaqah will be more than the reward we get by giving a whole mountain of gold as a sadaqah. The difference is the difference of Iman. The level of the taqwa. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een as soon as they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they uttered this kalima of shahada. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Do we realize what did they do after this kalima? What type of commitment they had with iman with Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم after this kalima? If we read and study the seerah carefully, we would see and realize that all of their traditions, everything that they brought with them. From Jahiliyyah, from the days of ignorance, they threw everything at once, they threw everything away, 
and took the whole deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, complete package without picking and choosing. That's it. Umar radiallahu anhu says, when I did the hijrah to Medina Munawwara, my wife refused to accept Iman. So I left her in Mecca and went to Medina Munawwara and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, this is the situation. My wife refused. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, she is not your wife anymore. One word, that's it. She is not. He has children from her. One word, she is not your wife anymore. That's it. Ya Rasulullah, she, she would never be them. They threw everything behind the backs. And they came into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For us, we would like to bring so many things with us into the deen. And then we like to mix up these things with the deen. As someone may have given a beautiful example. He says it's just like when you eat an egg or something like this and you sprinkle some black paper on top of it. This is what we would like to do is that bring all of our traditions and cover and everything that we are used to from our traditions and traditions of people that we associate with. We like to bring all of that and sprinkle Islam on top of it. And now we look at it, oh look, it looks Islam here. If you just move the black papers from on top, you will see that it's a whole egg. It's, it's not, the, the whole uh, thing in this plate is not a black paper, it's, it's egg. But it's covered with the black paper. This is what we would like to use, coding of Islam on top of everything that we like to do from our own backgrounds. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by a sahabi whose name was Uqbah ibn Amir radiallahu anhu. He says, I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, when the fitnas will start in the ummah, man naja, what will be the way to protect myself from the fitnas? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised me to do three things. He said to me, Amlik alayka lisan. Control your tongue at that time. Beautiful advice. And today we see that worst fitna that people are falling into is the fitna of their tongue. People are not committing the sins that they would talk about. They would try to defend sins, he may never commit that sin. But he's, defend, he's defending that, thing, that, that sin through his tongue by saying some things about it. Now this person, although he would never commit that sin, but he's considered as, be, as a person who is committing that sin because he's trying to defend it. Amlik alayka lisanak. Control your tongue. There is a beautiful hadith. Rated by Sayyidina Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu in Sunan al-Tirmizi. He says, I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, dullani ala amal, yudkhiluni al-jannah wa yuba'iduni min al-nar. Ya Rasulullah, tell me of something that will take me into jannah and keep me away from the hellfire. What a great question. What an important question. And then asking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if a person would approach us with this type of question, we may think, say, you have to read the whole Quran first. <coughs> Study the whole Quran, follow every order that's in Quran, and then I will tell you what to do next. Dullani ala amal, yudkhiluni al-jannah wa yuba'iduni min al -nar. Inform me of some deed, Ya Rasulullah, something that I would do that will protect me against, uh, that, that will take me to Jannah and protect me against the hellfire. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٌ The question is great. And the thing that you have asked about is very important and difficult. But, وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ It's easy for the ones that Allah will make easy for them. 
Ask Allah to make it easy, it will become easy for you. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started teaching him those things. He said, Ta'bud Allah wa la tushrika bihi shayya. Worship Allah, never associate partners with Allah. Wa tuqeem as salah, and establish salah. Wa tu'ti as zakah, and pay the zakah. Wa tasum Ramadan, and fast during the month of Ramadan. Wa tahujj al bayta, and istata'ta ilayhi sabiha. And perform the hajj if you are free to go for hajj. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, Ya Mu'az, أَفَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ الْخَيْرِ Should I inform you of some doors of certain deeds that will open all the doors of khair for you? Now, he's making it easy, step by step. Should I inform you of certain deeds that will open the doors towards every good for you? The أَبْوَابُ الْخَيْرِ All the khair will, will be opened up in front of you. You can choose and select from that khair, you can get into that khair always. I said, Bala ya Rasulullah, sure ya Rasulullah, please tell me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, As-sawmu jannah. He said, have the habit of fasting because it's a protection against sins. It's a shield against shaitan. As-sawmu jannah. It's a shield. We need to rem remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word adu for shaitan. Inna shaitan lakum adu. Shaitan is your enemy. When you are confronting the enemy, you must carry a shield with you. So whenever he attacks you, you can protect yourself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, as sawmu jannah. Fasting is a shield that will protect you against shaitan. And when you give a sadaqah, have the habit of giving a lot of sadaqah. Because... It takes away the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will get you the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, And have the habit of performing some salah during the night time, which is called salat al tahajjud. Three things. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me, Mu'az, should I inform you of something that will make all of these things easy for you? I said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, why not? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, that remember, jihad is the peak of iman. And sadaqah is always a protection. And then he said to me, Mu'az, remember one thing. أَفَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى مِلَاكِ ذَلِكَ كُلِّهِ I would inform you of something that will give you control over all of these things that I have just mentioned. Now remember the question. Something that will make going to Jannah easy and protection against the Jahannam very easy. So this is the procedure that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioning to Mu'az radiyallahu anhu. So he mentioned the Five pillars of Islam, he said, make sure you hold to these. Then it's telling him that you should hold to Abu Abul Khair. And it's telling him certain things that will be good for him to safeguard his Iman. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, Mu'az, I will just tell you one thing now. That will help you do all of those things. If you just do one thing now, all of these things will become easy for you. And if you don't do this, then none of this will be available for you. SubhanAllah, this thing should be very difficult to get to. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned something that we all have. It's in our position and it's our, in our control. We have to deal with it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَفَلَا أَذُلُّكَ عَلَى مِلَاكِ ذَلِكَ كُلِّ مِلَاكِ The thing that controls all of these things. Should I inform you of something that will control, that controls all of these things? I said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, please. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amlik alayka hadha, control your tongue. Control your tongue. And the reason for it, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, 
إذا أصبح ابن آدم أصبحت الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان أي تقول اتق الله فينا Every morning all different parts of the body the, the back, the tongue اتق الله فينا Fear Allah regarding us Fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى فإنك إن اعتدلت اعتدلنا وإن اعوججت اعوججنا Because if you stay straight we all will be straight throughout the day But if you stand going here and there then we all will, mis will, 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 mis will mis misbehave and wrongdoings will be seen from our bodies If you see a person who has a lot of bruises on his body and you ask him what happened Oh, we I got into a fight. How did you get into the fight? And we will, of course, for sure, initially, someone said something or he said something. And then started going further. And that person said, I can do this to you. And said, I'll show you what to do. And here he goes. All the parts of the body, the back, the tongue, that please, be careful throughout the day. But the point is, more than having this physical damage to the body, is the damage that is caused to our iman through this tongue. When a person starts speaking about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, senseless talk regarding the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what damages iman. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, if you cannot control your tongue, then all of your ibadahs are just going out of nowhere. And they are all out of the window. <coughs> the ibadahs are wasted when a person is not controlling his or her tongue. And if a person controls, learns how to control tongue, and this tongue is not being used against the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rest of a'mal will start falling in place. Imagine how important it is for us to control it. So the Uqba bin Amr radiallahu anhu says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, advised me to do three things. Number one, amlik alayka lisanak. Uqba, control your tongue. If you remember the question of Uqba bin Amr, man najatu ya Rasulullah, what's the way to protect myself in the days of fitna ya Rasulullah? Amlik alayka lisanak, control your tongue. Wal yasa'ka baytuk, stay at your home. Stay away from people. Every time you associate with people, you're getting into more fitnas. Every time we sit in our gatherings, there is riba there. There is backbiting there. There is lying there. And there is talk against being there. وَلْيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُكَ Remain, stay at your home. وَبْكِ عَلَىٰ خَطِيئَتِكَ And cry for the sins that you have committed. Three advisors. Through this, you will have the najah. Allah will protect you. Allah will protect your iman. And you will be protected against all the fitnas of those days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us against all the fitnas that are specially attacking our iman and at least weakening our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strong iman and faith and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to hold to this iman until the day we face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this iman.